They also taught my daughter in this program about Colorado House Bill 19-1120, which allows 12-year-olds to seek medical care without parent knowledge or consent. So they taught my daughter, now that she just turned 12, that she can seek medical care and not tell me. So puberty blockers, hormones, potential mutilation. We don't know how far the teacher and this presenter would have pushed her down this path of confusion if she hadn't have had the bravery to come home and tell us what happened. So it's not just what your kids get in school, but sometimes after school as well. Wouldn't you like to know what goes on in some of those extracurricular activities? Aaron Lee, also from Pooter, right. you've got a, what, a 12-year-old, did you say? She just turned 13. Just, just turned 13. Yep. All right, give me the story, because I found this so fascinating and so, I was about ready to say evil, but just so predatory. Maybe that's the right way to, to say it. So you move into town and what? Yep, we're new to town, we're new to, to school. Our daughter, it's the height of COVID protocols. Right. Daughter hasn't made a single connection oh. with a student her age. She's shy, artistic, introverted. Um, her art teacher one day invites her to stay for art club after school. Seems harmless, of course well, well, we wait, agree yeah, to it. That's a really nice thing. Mm -hmm. So school's getting back in, here's a shy kid, hasn't made friends in the new school or new neighborhood. Come, you wanna be part of art club? Yep. We're doing art club. You, you knew about it, right? That she was going to go to art club. She did text me during the day when the invite came through from the teacher and longing to make connection, of course, we yeah, want her to attend art go. club. Yep. It's an art club. For an artistic child. Who, so To make art. Right. All right. So tell us, please. <laughs> so she gets to art club, and it's actually Gender and Sexuality Awareness Art Club, or GSA. Uh, the teacher has invited in an outside presenter... <laughs> I, you, I'm slow with these things. So, was it actually art club? No. It wasn't an art club. There was no art. Was there drawing? If you consider the genderbred person an art activity, then perhaps yes. But All right, are you, you're, you're, I'm going down a different road because I don't even know what that <laughs> one is yet. So, but my major point is, teacher invited your kid. Art teacher. Art teacher to art club. Correct which turns out not to be art club at all. It was G-A-S? G-S-A, Gender and Sexuality Awareness. For your 12-year-old. For 11, 12, and 13-year-olds. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you didn't get a text, Mom, can I go to the Gender and Sexuality Awareness class club? You got, can I go to art club? Art club. My teacher wants me to go to art club, and I want to be in my teacher's good graces, and I'm... Want to meet some kids. Right. Well, this was the teacher she trusted the most. It was her homeroom teacher and her favorite subject. So she had, she had a lot of trust in this teacher. Um, so she gets there. The teacher had invited an outside presenter to come speak to the children. This person had no qualifications to be talking to kids about gender and sexuality. How do you know that? I've done research. She, okay. she has no, no licensure. She's not a counselor. She's not a full-time district teacher. Just a person who runs a nonprofit for queer kids. And... Is she being paid for this, or is this a volunteer gig? Volunteer gig. All right, so my guess is her organization gets money from some outside source. Absolutely. But she provides services as a volunteer to art club. Right. Is she an artist? No. Does she draw? She paint? Does not photography? Sculpture? Not that I know of, no. And not just the public school. She's also active in our Boys and Girls Club with elementary age students in our library system, um, on our health department board. So not, not just our school system. But she got there. She used flags to describe different uh, umbrella terms and defining words. She, for example, told my daughter if she's not 100% comfortable in her female body that she's transgender. And when my daughter adopted that label. She gave her the flag, plus stickers, plus bla bracelets, plus extra to give friends. She got swag. Swag. For announcing right then and there that she's transgender. Correct. And because she's transgender, that also means that she's queer. So she got queer flags, stickers, bracelets, plus extra to give friends. It's just kind of like... Do you remember the craze of Pokemon cards? It's like you're trying to collect as many as you can. Is that what was going on? Which was get as many labels as you can and you get as many different flags and stickers? Well, intersectionality. But yes, the woman, when I contacted her, told me these were the obligatory stickers and wristbands that kids love to collect everywhere they go. Wow, so I got it right. She knew what she was doing when she handed them out. All right, so hang on a second. She asked your daughter if 
she was comfortable in her body. She said, if you're not 100% comfortable in your female body, it's because you're transgender. Two things. One, what 12-year-old girl is 100% comfortable in her body? What, what 12-year-old girl is 90, you know, or just 2% comfortable in her No, this right. is a tough time for girls. And they know that. And they know it. And this is, this is a rough time for middle school girls and uh, issues of, of body image are yeah. at their height Right, especially. So that means anybody, any kid who doesn't like her fat thighs is now trans? They're not 100% comfortable. That's what it means. That's the label. She also pulled out the genderbred person activity, which explicitly asked the little kids who they're sexually attracted to. So this woman asked my barely 12-year-old daughter who she's sexually attracted to. All right, you're leaving ahead a little too fast here for me. <laughs> you lost me at gingerbread or... Genderbred. Genderbred person. I've heard of gingerbread people. This is a genderbred. So right. at the art class, mm -hmm. which wasn't an art class, it was an indoctrination session that had nothing to do uh, with art at all, but Correct. trying to convince kids who are not 100% comfortable with their body that they are, in fact, transgendered. And they talked about the genderbred person. Person. Right, which what I guess is a you could gender-bred person. Guess you could consider it an art activity. It's a various um, places where the children are to plot their points with their gender and sexuality. So it confirms it. It explains that um, gender and sexuality are never binary; that they are always on these spectrums. And then has the kids plot their points. And one of the points that they plot is who are they sexually attracted to, from male to female. Right, and I didn't even start off with um, how she started this meeting. She pulled out a PowerPoint, and her number one rule is what you hear in here, keep in here. So she started this information session, not art club, by telling the kids to keep everything that happens here a secret. Going in 15 different directions here <laughs> in my head, but let's, let's focus in on this one. Sexual predators and other abusers tell kids, don't tell your parents right and as parents we try to tell our kids to tell us everything mm -hmm. so let me see if i've got this right a public school teacher invites your child into what she thinks is an art cl a club in fact it's an indoctrination session tells her she's transgendered and finds out who she's sexually attracted to and tells your daughter, don't tell mom. Not just don't tell mom, but that parents aren't safe. She explicitly she told the children that. How do you, okay, keep going. Because she told me. The woman, when I contacted her the next day after this happened, because she gave my daughter her personal contact information. So I reached out to her. She said, parents aren't safe, but I am. And here's my personal contact parents information. Parents aren't safe, but I am. Correct. MSNBC has all sorts of sting operations for people who operate like this, right. who do not want your parents to know that you have my personal contact information and you can contact me anytime. Don't tell your parents. So she told you this yeah. personally. Yes, that she told the kids' parents aren't always safe. It's okay to lie to them about where you are in order to attend this programming, not just that particular programming, but future programming of hers that she conducts in secret, both online and in person, sometimes with adults present. So these 12-year-olds are in this kind of programming with 18-year-olds. Um, she asked my daughter to connect with her on such teen chat platforms as Discord and WhatsApp and various channels where she knows parents aren't monitoring the conversation. This is reprehensible, no matter how you put it. And if you want your kid to be involved in a gender and sexuality awareness club, more power to right. you. I mean, I've, I've got um, gay family members, and when they had to come out years ago, there was no support group right. for them. There was no place for them to go. I think it's spectacular that these schools have clubs and support groups. I think it's, it's a terrific thing. And... But I agree, and that's been our position all along, that we're, we're not, my husband and I are not against LGBTQ programming. We're just not okay with how this particular program happened and that the school systems are intentionally doing it in secret. You are, they are intentionally fabricating falsehoods and giving it to you. One of the things we expect from government, demand of government, is the truth. 
because we need some place to go that says this record is truthful. Right. This is truthful. That is not. This, and that's why transparency is so crucial. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you asked for materials or what? So we, can't, we, we remained calm enough to reach. You were, I, you're better than I would. Somehow. Somehow we remained calm enough to contact this woman who pretty much doubled down on everything that she had done. Her, her response to me was delusional. It was like she was proud of what she had done. She wasn't picking up on the fact that I was unhappy with the situation. So we didn't have any further contact with her. We called the principal. We demanded an immediate sit down. And he was empathetic to you know, the fact that we were going through this painful situation with our child, that she was hurt by what had happened to her, that there was serious mental emotional trauma that was sustained that is irreparable, but he confirmed that it happened intentionally in secret because the school district has to provide a safe space for children. So essentially a safe space from their families. You're, you were lied to. Your daughter was had a predator use falsehoods to get her into, into this class. To lure, yeah. To lure her in mm -hmm. and... Did you ask to see all the all the documentation? So we did. We asked to see the all of the content that right. was, um, you know, part of the programming, and we were told that because it was conducted by a third party, that's not their material, and they don't have access to it. Contact the person who who did this. Did you ever think about calling the police? I did call the police. I. Because this is, this is predatory behavior. Correct. What did the police do? If this had happened on a playground, the police would have been my immediate call. I, I wouldn't have remained right. as calm as I did because it happened in a school setting. But um, the police indicated that because it happened in a classroom, because she was there by teacher invite and there was no physical touch or exposure of body parts, how that you, there's no legal repercussion. How do you know that if there wasn't a... You're, no you're content. Not allowed, <laughs> there's no content and you're not allowed to talk about it right. and your parents are not allowed. How do we know what goes on there? Especially if then later on in this art club, there are more adults there and you're not allowed to tell your parents. Right. This is terrifying. It's every parent's worst nightmare. My innocent little girl went to school like any regular Tuesday in and wanted sixth to go grade. to art club. Just wanted to meet some people at art club. And she what came home, to this teacher? nothing. So nothing has been done to address the teacher's role in the situation. We don't know if she was just standing idly by during the abuse, if she participated in it, but she is still the GSA sponsor for the school and still the LGBTQ contact for And the so school. she had to be there for the class as well. She was in the room. She was in the room. Correct. So a paid public teacher is in the room as she learns about your daughter's sexual proclivities and what she like, who she's attracted to, yep. even though if, if this was a doctor, they would need to get your permission for any sort of HIPAA violation, this, this doesn't hold. You would think so, but they also taught my daughter in this program about Colorado House Bill 19-1120, which allows 12-year-olds to seek medical care without parent knowledge or consent. So they taught my daughter now that she just turned 12, that she can seek medical care and not tell me. So puberty blockers, hormones, potential mutilation. We don't know how far the teacher and this presenter would have pushed her down this path of confusion if she hadn't have had the bravery to come home and tell us what happened. Are you just some uptight, <laughs> anti-gay, anti-trans, Bible thumping, you, we, we gotta get the devil out of our public schools, uh, there's trouble right here in River City type. Wouldn't it be easier if I was? That's yeah. the argument that I've been met with all along this road of speaking out, that this was an isolated incident, that I'm just intolerant, I'm bigoted. But again, I'm not against LGBTQ programming. I'm an unaffiliated voter that voted for Polis. And I know that's an unpopular opinion on this show, but I'm clearly not a right-wing, intolerant nutbag who just wants this kind of thing out of our school. Where do you think the woman gets the money to do this? Because my guess is this is a full-time gig for her. Yes, she's a paid employee of the Larimer County Health Department with access to children's information. Oh, what? Correct. She's a full-time government employee. Yes, with access to children's information. Yeah, so that's where the paycheck comes from. Um, but again, she's in our Boys and Girls Clubs, our schools in our Tri-County area. She's a substitute teacher in the Tri-County area with elementary students who has been known to approach kids unsolicited with her contact info. Incredible. All right. What's the next step? So <laughs> we followed all the appropriate channels, right? We contacted the woman. We contacted the school. We, I stood before Con the board. Contacted 
the police. Contacted the police. I stood before the school board. I pled my case over and over and over. I mean, it's an emotional thing to even talk about and and to be met with such vitriol for speaking up with just the truth about what happened. Just trying to protect your daughter. Right, and protect other kids because we know that they're being told that to keep it a secret and don't tell your parents. They're not safe. How many kids are out there suffering in silence because they followed the rule or because, you know, they didn't have the guts to speak up? Abuse by a trusted authority figure, a teacher, says you want to be in here, and it's your teacher, for God's sake. Right, right. and we teach our kids to respect authority right. in their schools. And, and she really trusted this person, but the school board ignored my pleas for months. I finally got to sit down with a board member who turns out to be best friends with the woman who came into my daughter's classroom and condoned everything that she does and even volunteers with her organization with kids as young as five. So it comes from the top. <laughs> She was put there intentionally, and she's not going anywhere. That's remarkable. What would be a solution in your eyes? So my advice for other parents, obviously, if you can afford it, get your kids out of public school. You know, this kind of content is not just happening in extracurriculars. It's being peppered into, obviously, human growth and development curriculum in the fifth grade. The gender-bred person was a part of PSD curriculum in fifth grade. Hooter Valley School District. Hooter School District. It's peppered into social emotional learning in kindergarten, in first grade. I mean, they're managing to sneak pronoun conversations into physical education and reading. It's peppered into every area of our curriculum, and it's really hard to detect. So my best advice is pull your kids out of public school. Well, let me tell you, I couldn't afford that. No. And most people can't afford that. Right. And so for those of us stuck in the government system, What is it we're supposed to do? Yeah, you have to take a more active role in demanding to see what's happening in our schools. And we know that there's a fight across the country for transparency for parents. And that's why we've been working, and it's been hard. We brought a bill up to the legislature. It got shot down. We brought forward a citizen's initiative. The title board said it it wasn't a single subject, even though it was about this one topic. Right. And it gets harder and harder. We need to change things so that parents know what's going on in their kids' schools. Right. Um, If a stranger can have these conversations and the government says to the stranger, it's fine, we're okay that you are having these private conversations about these personal issues without parents knowing. In fact, we'll pay you for it. In fact, we'll help protect you. We'll make sure no communication goes out about this program so that all these kids are here in secret. Absolutely. And I found since speaking up with the school board and to the school board that the vocal minority is out there pleading their case for this kind of programming and pleading their case against transparency for parents and villainizing parents like me who, again, are not against LGBTQ programming. I just want transparency. I just deserved a heads up before this happened to my daughter because it changes the trajectory of her life and and of us as a family. How's your daughter doing? She's better now. She's in in private school. Uh, You pulled her out because of this? She never went back the next day. She never went back. Was I that never your let choice her step- or was that? Her? That was my choice. That was our choice as her parents, that what had happened to her was so unsafe and so alarming that she will never step foot in a public school again. Our, our trust is shattered. You know, with this lack of transparency, with this intentional secret programming, I don't know how we ever repair our faith and our trust in the system that I used to be a part of and that I grew up in and that I, I want for my children. And I still have a second grader in the public school district. How is she doing? In other words, did this traumatize you more than it traumatized her? No, she, she really adopted that label. She really believed that what these people told her, right? She's, she's uncomfortable in her body. and, and these she's people, 12-year-old and right, she's a girl. Right, and they gave her a label and it made, her, made everything make sense. Well, you feel this way because you're this label. So just live out this label and everything will make sense for you. And so she tried it. And it was really difficult for us as parents because we had no idea this was happening. We were so caught off guard and ill-equipped to help her that when she came home and told us what happened, we didn't know what to say. How do we even approach this subject with her? So it put a strain on our whole family dynamic that still exists because she's been told by trusted adults that she can't talk to us, that she can't trust us, that we're going to act intolerant and bigoted and overreact to her telling us that she's transgender. And so we played right into the narrative that they set up. They knew that's how we would react and they prepared her for it. Wow, that is a brainwashing. If this hadn't happened, and I know it's hard to to say, but if this hadn't happened, and your kid came home and it was actually an art club, what would be different now? Well, we were admittedly, blissfully naive walking through parenthood. 
Do you, do you think that she would? Do you think? Uh, let me put it differently. Do you think she is trans? No. No, I know my daughter. I, I've known her since the day she was born. She is my girly little girl, always has been, and came upon, you know, confusing hormones and a really tough time having moved to a new school during COVID. And no, I think it was a situational um, circumstance. And no, she's not transgender. And if she was, I would love her just the same. If she was that, you know, 0.01% of the population, then we would absolutely appreciate that that's who she is. But we know our daughter. And this stranger who didn't even know her name did not know our daughter. I always think about kids who don't have parents who are more com comfortable with conflict, mm -hmm. who are willing to call up the principal and say what, or parents who are uh, here illegally or don't know the language or are scared of making waves. And the last thing they want to do is, is get involved. And they might not. I, I can only imagine how much of this is going on that parents have no idea about. And that's why we speak up. And it, and it hasn't been easy to speak up. And I'm a pretty non-confrontational private person. Um, and, and I just... And you brought this to Pam Bedanio at the Independence Institute. And I, I hope other people do too, because I think, I think that's important to know they're not alone. Right. It, fe it felt for a long time like we were alone on an island yeah. and this was an isolated incident. As we do our research, we realize that this is an initiative that comes from the top. And there's a lot of families like us that are just afraid to say something. Thank you so much for sharing this, this story. I know it's painful, but we've got to get this out, and we've got to fight for the transparency so right. parents aren't surprised. More importantly, that you're not lied to. This, this is the worst part. Your kid is a victim of a predator, and you've been lied to, and she's been lied to. Right. This was not an art class. Aaron, thanks so much. Thank you. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, Click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.